without vision, my people perish. And so it's important that we have a vision, a God vision for our life, a God plan for our life. But you must understand that he, understand that he also gifts you for your vision. And, and gives you the ability by his grace to fulfill what he's called you to. Some of it can be delayed because of our own hard-headedness, you know, as far as the, the giftings and operation. Um, some of it is just straight up not yielding to the Holy Spirit. But here, turn with me to Habakkuk chapter 2 and verse 1. I will stand my watch and set myself on the ramparts and watch to see what he will say to me and what I will answer when I am corrected. Then the Lord answered me and said, write the vision and make it plain on tablets that he may run who reads it. For the vision is yet for an appointed time. But at the end, it will speak. And it will not lie. Though it tarries, wait for it, because it will surely come. It will not tarry. Behold the proud. His soul is not upright in him, but the just shall live by faith. Now, we already touched on that, talking about the just shall live by faith. You can only fulfill the vision by faith. You got to have faith. You have to trust. You have to trust Father that he's given you the vision for your life. And then you write it down. He may not give the whole thing to you, but he gives you, he gives you the far out there. So you something to aim for, right? Or should I say something uh, 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 where you're going after vision to see it? It's broader, but then you have the goal. The goal is the target which you're hitting, and it's just goals that finally take you into the vision. Amen. But God has a vision. But the only way we're going to find out what that vision is is that we stand on our watch, that we pray and be willing to be corrected when he speaks to us to make the changes that are necessary to make in order to run with the vision. And you write it down so that you, he who reads it may run with it. We're called to run. We're called to run with the plan and the purpose of God for our lives. Because our lives are but a vapor. We're like the grass of the field. We're here, but then, <laughs> then we're gone tomorrow. It, it dries up. Just like the, 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 the lily of the field, like the flower. It just goes. It, it, it blooms, and then it just dries up and withers. And that's the way that our life is in the light of eternity here on the earth. That moment of time on the earth, it's, it's but a vapor. <laughs> For your young people, you don't think that way, but when you start looking back and then you see your littles all of a sudden becoming men, you're like, oh my gosh, hold on now. It does go by really fast. And so that's why it's imperative that you begin to know what the plan of God is, the vision of God is for your life. Because if you're living out the plan, you're living out the vision that he has for you, then you're going to be living in eternity. You're going to be living for eternity. Instead of living in the temporal realm, instead of living for temporal things that will fade away and go. You never know the day nor the hour that you could pass away. You never know the day nor the hour that you breathe your last. It's appointed unto man once to die and then the judgment. Then you stand before God. It's truth. And we have to give an account everything that was said and everything that was done while we're on the earth. That's why it's imperative that we, we don't, that we number our days and that we understand that there is a short amount of time that we're here so that we can just get after it. 
and live, not for ourselves, but for the Lord. And you're living through Christ Jesus. Yes, you're living for the Lord, but you're still living through the ability of the life of Christ that's on the inside of you. It's, it's you're here for a moment and then gone. I'm like, listen, I, I, my, my dad went home to be with the Lord in May not that long ago. It was just last May. And it seems like it's been a while, but it really wasn't that long ago. But it's important. Now, his life was cut short. I'm just being honest. His life was cut short. That wasn't the plan of God for his life. That wasn't the will of God for his life. For him, right here on earth. Now, there's no condemnation to those who are in Christ Jesus. He's in Christ Jesus, you know, and, and he's before the Father. And... And he had dreams. He died with dreams. Don't let your life be a thing where you wind up in the end dying with the dreams that were in your heart that God put there, not your natural stupid stuff. But that you, when you breathe your last, you can say, Lord, I've run the race. Just like Paul said, I ran the race. I finished the race. I want you all to finish the race because if I'm here behind this pulpit and I don't want that, then I got to race you. I want each and every single one of you to finish the race that God has set before you. His plan, His purposes. Amen. 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 To see your, the dreams that God has put inside of you realized and come to pass. Amen. That's why we do things to, try, to really get you activated. That's why we do outreaches. That's why we, we are going through the whole discipleship thing to activate the body, to get you activated, to, to reach lust, because the only thing that you can take with you is souls. You can't take anything else. Naked you came into the world. Naked you're going to leave. You can't take gold. You can't take silver. You can't take anything with you. The thing that men toil after and, and spend their life away for They can't take with them. They can't take houses, can't, can't take lands, can't take vehicles, all the things that they work so hard for. Hours and hours and hours, hours and hours and hours of their life, but for nothing. Now, does, and it's not that God doesn't want you to have stuff. He doesn't want you to be, uh, uh, you know, so poor that you can't pay your electric bill. You know, he doesn't want you so poor that you can't pay attention. <laughs> Try to pull out a Pastor Rodney joke. <laughs> he wants you blessed, but that's not your focus. Your focus is to seek first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all these things shall be added unto you. You seeking him first. You're seeking eternal, you're seeking what his plan is for your life, what the kingdom plan is for you. Newsflash, I want to let you know that you're living in the kingdom now as a born again child of God. You're a part of the kingdom now. How do I know that? Because the Bible says that, that you're seated in Christ Jesus in heavenly places. You're seated in him. Well, I'm sitting on some chairs here in Bremerton, Washington. What do you mean I'm seated in him? You're spiritually, you're seated in him. 
And it's the Holy Spirit that causes this to take place. Amen. It's Christ Jesus that causes this to take place. Because he, they've made, the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit made their home within us. But also, guess what? We got to make our home within Him. Within Father. So we're seated in Christ Jesus. We're one. Now, yes, your natural body isn't there, but your spirit man can be in your natural body, but he can also be in God. Amen? And so well, how does that happen? What, how does that, because God, he can do it, and that's what he wants. He wants us to be one with him because of the blood of Jesus that cleansed us to made this, made this possible for us. Amen? So we're living for eternity. We're not living for ourselves in the earth. Now, does he know that you need to, to eat and you need to still work? Yes, you still need to work. You still need to have a job. But when you go out and you get that job, let it just, you let your life shine, Jesus, and you'll be living for eternity. Amen? Amen? But you won't be living to make the paycheck. You'll be living to, to literally reach the lost. Amen? So we don't want that to be our focus. We don't want just the natural things. We don't want the cars. We don't want the lands. We don't want all that stuff to be our focus. Matter of fact, I'm, I believe that, that God can bless you enough to where you can just hire a gardener to go do your gardening, and so you don't have to sit there and spend time gardening. So you can be busy doing the things of God. Yeah, cleaning your house, whatever. Listen, it's time to think outside the box. Has any of you even thought about that? But God wants to bless you so that you can do that, so you can fulfill the plan of God for, for your life. No. You're like, wow, Pastor Jason. No, I'm thinking big right now. Matter of fact, your top businessmen. What they do is, I read this somewhere, I don't remember who it was, but it was more important that, and he was using it to spend time with his family, so he would pay to make sure that there was a house cleaner and all this other stuff, but it freed him up to be able to be with his family, to have that extra free time, so they're not all spending time trying to clean the house and do all the different things that they have to do, so that he could spend that quality time with his family. Successful people, that's what they do. And say, I'm successful. You're successful in here because you're in God. Well, I don't know if God calls all people to be able to have a, a house made. Be it unto you according to your faith. Why am I getting off on this? I know it's the Holy Ghost. But this is good. <laughs> Come on. Well, so you can fulfill God's plan. Like, listen, sit here messing around, working on your cars. On. Listen, you know how many times, I've, hours I've wasted working on my own car, keeping the thing going? Not now, but beforehand. My old truck, I stripped, the, I stripped it down to the block because I had to change the head gaskets. Not the valve cover gaskets, the head gaskets. Some of you are like, what is that? <laughs> it's a job. And you know how many hours I wasted doing that? A lot. No, let's believe God. Let's trust God. Amen? Let's believe Him. For the maid... For the long guys, hey, listen, I enjoy having the long, long guys come and you know, I don't have to do any of that. I don't have to weed. We don't have to do none of that. And the cool thing is it came with the rent, you know, where we're at. So it was awesome. Thank you, Jesus. We don't have, I don't have to be out there mowing the lawn. Wouldn't that be nice that you don't have to sit there and keep up with the yard, Pablo? Oh, yeah. Get somebody. <laughs> Amen. Amen. And then we could, you know, look at that. That's just, they got a big yard. So, but do you see what I'm saying? Yeah. 
so that we can have that, that, other, that time to do the things that the Lord would, would desire us to do. Amen. Now, now, if you enjoy, that's your prayer time, you enjoy getting out on the lawnmower and mowing and, and praying, and then that's good. That's fine. That's okay. But <laughs> that's enough of that. <laughs> so he has a plan. He has a purpose for your life. In Ephesians chapter 4, verse 1, I therefore, the prisoner of the Lord, beseech you to walk worthy of the calling with which you were called, with all lowliness and gentleness, with long-suffering, bearing with one another in love, endeavoring to keep the unity of the Spirit in the bond of peace. There is one body and one Spirit, just as you were called in one hope of your calling. One Lord, one faith, one baptism, one God and Father of all who is above all and through all and in you all. But to each one of us, grace was given according to the measure of Christ's gift. Therefore, he says, when he ascended on high, he led captivity captive and gave gifts to men. So he gave gifts for your vision. He gave gifts for God's plan for your life. Say, I have have gifts. Listen, some of you have some gifts that are just lying dormant. And, and, and the way to see those gifts come out is praying in the Spirit. Yeah. Just praying that forth and, and, and bring it up. Amen? And He began to show you. And then those gifts start coming out. And you start doing what, what that gifting allows you to do. Amen? I have a little note in one of my Bibles here about this. It says, that he might be the fountain of all spiritual, physical, and material gifts to men, dispensing them to all men liberally according to their needs and wants. So the dispensing those gifts and all that according to their needs and according to their wants. Listen, when you have the heart of God, you're going to want the things that Father wants you to have. When you're spending time with him, you're seeking first the kingdom of God and his righteousness. Then these things are added unto you. And again, here, Psalm 68 and verse 18, because that's a repeat of, of verse 8 in, in Ephesians 4.8. Um, it says, thou hast ascended on high, thou hast led captivity to be captive. Thou hast received gifts for men, yea, for the rebellious also, that the Lord God might dwell among them. So gifts have been given. So don't doubt the gift that God has given you. Don't doubt the gifts that God have give, has given you. Maybe it's just one gift, but you apply that gift, and you grow in that gift, and then he'll start fi- seeing you faithful, and he'll give you more gifts to fulfill the, his plan for your life. It will multiply. You will grow. You will increase. Amen. Now turn to 2 Corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14. Now thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ. You're not going to fail. But you're going to triumph. You're going to overcome. You're going to walk in the giftings that God has given you. All those hindrances, all those things that have come against you, assignments from the enemy since birth, you will triumph over those things. They will not prosper because you're in Christ Jesus. And those gifts that God has given you will be realized and come to fruition in your life. As you remain faithful, as you remain consistent, As you remain pressing into the things of the Lord and his heart and his word and in relationship with him, those gifts will be realized in your life. And the vision will come to pass. (sighs) 
<laughs> Whoo! Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph in Christ and through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. To the one, we are the aroma of death leading to death. Wow, that sounds pretty harsh. And to the other, the aroma of life leading to life. And who is sufficient for these things? For we are not as, um, as so many peddling the word of God, but as of sincerity, but as from God we speak in the sight of God in Christ. Amen. This is who you are. As a child of God, and as one who would rise up into ministering the word of God, no, now ministering the word of God isn't always pulp. It's not always pulpit ministry. It's it's your life, your life ministering to those around. Your life is a fragrance. I mean, through us diffuses the fragrance of His knowledge in every place, in every place, everywhere you go. For we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are being saved and among those who are perishing. Now what fragrance are you going to bring? A fragrance of your flesh head? Your meat head? Or a fragrance the fragrance of Christ? That's what he's called us to bring. This is who we are. And when we live by the Spirit, we bring the fragrance of Jesus to those who are alive in God and those who are perishing. Now I'm going to hit on the, what it means to tri triumph, to triumph. The word triumph here is like that of the Romans in which a public and solemn honor was conferred upon a victorious general by allowing him a magnificent procession through the city of Rome. This was not granted by the Senate unless he had gained a very single and de decisive victory or conquered a province. On such occasions, the general was a, was clad in purple and gold woven in figures setting forth his achievements. He wore a crown and in one hand held a branch of laurel, the emblem of victory in the other. He carried his staff. He rode a magnificent chariot adorned with ivory and plates of gold. And, drawing by, and drawn by white horses. To keep him humble in the midst of all this, a slave rode at his back, casting railings and reproaches and enumerating his vices and failures. Musicians led the procession. Young men led sacrifices to, um, sacrifices to be offered. Then came loads of spoil, followed by the king's princes and generals taken captive. After these came the, tri came the triumphal chariot before which people strewed flowers and shouted triumphant cries. Following this came the senate, priests, and the rest of the parade. Triumph in Christ means complete mastery over satanic powers. At least we don't have to have a slave coming behind us shouting insults and Telling us all our vices and where we... The enemy tries to do that. Sounds like the devil. But, but our humility, thank you, Jesus, comes from the Holy Ghost. <laughs> comes from the life of Christ. <laughs> Amen? But we're triumphant over the enemy. You're triumphant. 
You're triumphant to live out the calling of God in your life. You're triumphant through Christ, not in your own ability, not in your own might, but through Christ. That's how we stay walking in humility is that we got our eyes on Jesus, not on our accomplishments, not on how many people were healed. Come on now. Not on how many we got saved at the last, you know, crusade. Not how many, no, no, our tri- uh, our, we triumph through Christ Jesus. We walk in humility because we know where our strength comes from. We know where our ability comes from. We know where the giftings come from. We know how they flow. It's just that you made a decision to yield and surrender and give your life to him and be a vessel of honor to be used by Heavenly Father. You're triumphant. See, when you understand this, then you can walk worthy of the calling that God has called you to. Romans chapter 12, verse 1. Because this is how the vision is fulfilled. Because of this character that we have, because of the giftings that, that... that are being operated. The giftings work best when the character is right. And the character is from Christ Jesus. Amen. I beseech, Romans chapter 12, I beseech, I make an appeal to you. You therefore, brethren, by the tender compassions of God. So here Paul is making an appeal to the Romans, to the church in Rome. I beseech you, I make an appeal to you. You therefore, brethren, by the tender compassions of God, or mercies of God, that you present your bodies a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your reasonable service. And do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind that you may approve what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. So how are we gonna, how are we gonna know what is that good and acceptable and perfect will of God? That we don't be conformed to this world, but that we are allowing ourselves to be transformed by the word of God and allowing the spirit of God to bring revelation and understanding concerning the word so that it's coming alive in us. This is how we know what the perfect will of God will be for our life. You're giving yourself. And then the giftings, we start to see what those giftings are. But there's presenting our bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto God, which is your reasonable service. It's your reasonable service. It's not leftover service. It's not just giving your leftovers. It's it's your reason. That's it's 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 the no brainer service. Amen. Now, and do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you may prove what is the good and acceptable and perfect will of God. I want to know what that good and perfect and acceptable will of God is for my life. For I say, though through the grace given to me, to everyone who is among you, not to think of himself more highly than he ought to think, but 
to think soberly as God has dealt to each one a measure of faith. For as we have many members in one body, but all the members do not have the same function, so we, being many, are one body in Christ and individually members of one another, having the gifts differing according to the grace that is given to us. Let us use them according to the grace that is given unto you. Let us use them. What's them? The gifts. According to the grace that's given to you. Use it. Step out and use it. Step out in faith and start operating in that gift and watch what God will do Amen. with your life and how he will use you. He's just looking for a surrendered life. He's just looking for willingness in your heart. Many people don't realize their gifts because there's lack of willingness. And, and that lack of willingness could be stubbornness it, 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 or it could just be fear, which is still a form of, of stubbornness. Just fear of failure. Don't be afraid to fail. Because if you're afraid to fail, then you're not in faith. And if it's not in faith, then guess what? You've missed the mark. You've sinned. Because whatever's not in faith is sin. So step out in faith in the gift God has for you. Because that gifting in your life is what's going to help bring your vision to pass. If prophecy, let us prophesy in proportion to our faith. This gift given to you will grow as your faith grows. Not faith in the gift itself, but in relation to God or mystery. Let us use it. Ministry, excuse me, or ministry. Let us use it in our ministering. He who teaches in teaching. He who exhorts in exhortation. He who gives with liberality. He who leads with diligence. He who shows mercy with cheerfulness. Let love be without hypocrisy. Now the next section of of this chapter here, it's really, it's your conduct as you function in your gifts. That's how it flows. He talks about... uh, that we need to give ourselves fully to the Lord to find out what the perfect will of God is for our life. And when we find out what the perfect will of God is for our life, then we see the giftings realized, right? And then, when the, and then he, he lists off some of the lists of those giftings that are available that you can walk in, that you can recognize. Now, there are more gifts that you can recognize, right? They are God-given to you. But then this next section here, of chapter 8 is about your conduct within the, within the giftings that you have, you have and how you're to operate in these giftings. Abhor what is evil, cling to what is good. Be kindly and affectionate to one another with brotherly love in honor, lo- uh, giving preference to one another, not lagging in diligence, fervent in spirit, serving the Lord, Rejoicing in hope, patient in tribulation, continuing steadfastly in prayer, distributing to the needs of the saints, given to hospitality. Bless those who persecute you. Bless and do not curse. Rejoice with those who rejoice and weep with those who weep. Be of the same mind toward one another. Do not set your mind on high things, but associate with the humble. Do not be wise in your own opinion. Repay no one for evil. Have regard for good things in the sight of all men. If it is possible, as much as depends on you, live peacefully with all men. Beloved, do not avenge yourselves, but rather give place to wrath. For it is written, vengeance is mine. I will repay says the Lord. Therefore, if your enemy is hungry, feed him. If he is thirsty, give him a drink. For in so doing, you will heap coals of fire on his head. 
Do not be overcome by evil, but overcome evil with good. And this is how you're going to see the vision come to pass when you're living by the Spirit in that realm. Living by those principles right there in Romans 8. 12, excuse me. 8's good too, but Romans 12. (laughs) Amen? You each have giftings. Now, let's go find out what they are. If you don't know what they are, let's find out what they are. If you do know what it is, start operating in it. Operate in it more. Walk in it more. Yield to it more. Stretch yourself more. Amen? Amen. If it's singing and worshiping God, then sing. Worship the Lord more. If it's giving, give more. God will provide. Listen, there's the gift of a giver. Amen? If it's preaching the word of God, then preach the word. Well, I don't have a pulpit, brother. Well, get out there on the streets and start ministering to people. God will make the doors, open those doors for you. Listen, sometimes, you know, really, just preaching to a bunch of people that are saved isn't always what you want to do anyway. (laughs) Amen? If it's serving, then serve more. And let these gifts just begin to grow. And then this body will be blessed because of your obedience, because of your supply that you're bringing, because of the gift that God has in you. You've not been given a spirit of fear, of timidity, but, of, but the spirit of love, power, and a sound mind or self-control. That's what you have been given. You've not been given a spirit of fear. It is demonic, and it's straight from the pit of hell, and it's designed to hold you back and keep you from fulfilling God's plan and vision for your life. That's all there is to it, and you're going to have to face your fear. I had to face my fear standing in front of people and ministering. I had to push past at a young age stuttered and everything it was terrible but I knew God had called me so I'm just going to keep being faithful I'm going to keep growing in him I'm going to keep giving myself to his word I'm going to keep giving myself to prayer I'm going to keep operating in this gift amen so don't no excuses Let's remove all the excuses that we have made for ourselves of why we aren't doing certain things. That the Lord says, hey, what you, what's going on now? Why aren't you stepping out on this gifting? Why are you not operating in this? Amen? Because listen, we need to, remember like I talked about, we need to be numbering our days. We're only here for a short amount of time. Like, I'm looking back, oh my gosh, this has gone fast, faster than what I anticipated it to go. Now, if you're in the sunset of your years, just start worshiping God, praise God, and still find out what he has for you. He'll strengthen you. Listen, Joshua and Caleb took the land at 80 years of age. He can, he can give you that strength and give you 20 more years. Come on or more. But you just trust God and you surrender. I know some people don't want to live to be over 100 years old. But as, hey, if you're healthy and you're, and you're strong and you're going at it, then, and God has a plan for you and you're still pressing forward with, 
and it's more beneficial for you to still be here than, than, than you stay and you keep going at it. Yeah. Amen? Amen? So no excuses. No excuses. Let's, let's change. Let's, let's step over into those, those giftings that God has in you. Those ones that are maybe laying dormant that we didn't even know about yet. I'm excited to see what's going to come out of this group. I'm excited about what God's bringing forth out of here. I'm excited to see the visions that, that, that will be realized and come to fruition in your life. Amen? It's only going to enhance the vision of the house here. When you're fulfilling your vision, it's going to only enhance the vision in this house. You're called here. This is your home. This is your church. Then guess what? The calling that God has you, it's going to line up. It's going to fit. Amen? Amen. We're going to have traveling ministers coming in and out, coming back. This will be their home base, but they'll be coming, going and coming. Amen? Amen. Amen. We're going to see pastors raised up in the house. Amen. Multiple pastors that we're going to need within this house. Teachers raised up in this house. Yeah. And their gifts being used. Hallelujah. We're starting to already do, get some of that rolling more and more. But you know, watch what God's about to do. Yeah. Amen. Amen. We're going to send evangelism teams out. Like I mean, not not just on Saturday. No, I'm going to have Holy Ghost SWAT teams. Yep. <laughs> SWAT. Oh, yeah. Soul winning attack teams that are hitting the streets. I have people already in my mind for this right now. In my heart right now. They're going to be a part of the soul winning attack teams. I remember when we were in, in Shreveport, Louisiana, and they were driving us around in one of the white vans. And we would literally, it's just like go to a slow creep and then we'd open the doors and about four of us would jump out and we'd go split up two by two and then hit, hit a group here, hit a group there and then come back, jump in the van and take off again and go get another group here and there and just go to town just ministering the gospel to people. I remember taking the, the battering ram to the door. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> Not kicking in people's doors and preaching. No, I'm teasing. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm totally joking. <laughs> You're getting saved. <laughs> On your knees now. <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, come into my heart, come into my heart. Come here, Ben, Ben, come here, come here. Imagine having this dude kick your door down. Get on your knees. <laughs> Flee him. Flee him. Flee him. <laughs> no, we don't kick people's doors down. But we do knock on them. Jesus. Hallelujah. 
For to remember, he did tell us to go with the love, <laughs> <laughs> kindness, gentleness, you know, self control. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> so that's why we need your giftings. We need to see your giftings realized. Because as the soul winning attack teams go out and they're bringing in a harvest, because the Lord is coming back, we're going to need people that are ready to disciple, teach, all of that. Amen. We're going to raise up, see, businessmen rising up, successful. I'm not just talking small business. I'm talking big business. Amen. That they're anointed. And then we're, you know, we're believing God to see about 60 staff members. Paid. That's where we're headed. Amen. 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 And you're a part of that. You're a part of, 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 of this. You're going to be engaged more. It's not just coming to church on Sunday. It's not just a Wednesday night. It's, it's so much more than that. Right. Amen. Amen. You're part of the family of God, and you're part of this family right here. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. <laughs> yeah. For the sake of the, the internet. It just keeps coming up. The, w- when he read through that, there was a delineation between the gifts and then the character. But do not try to dissect the two. They are inseparable. Because there's a whole lot of people who think that their gifting excuses bad character. And they think that because they're gifted, that they don't have to walk in love. And they don't have to do those things. Because the gifting makes way. Uh, I I was under a pastor who elevated gifting above everything years ago. And I watched him reap a bumper crop of unfaithfulness in the people he elevated. And that was one of his favorite song, his proverbs. Your gift will make way for you. Put you in command of kings. It's in the Bible. But I added a little thing on the end. Your gift may make way for you, but your character will keep you there. Your gifting is for a purpose, but if you have no character, you will lose the position that God makes for you because you cannot maintain it. And sometimes character is developed in ways that are unpleasant to you. I've seen so many people that they come into the church and I'm called to preach and that's all I'm going to do. No, that is not all you're going to do. That's not all you're going to do because this don't belong to you. This, this, these people are stewards. Our pastors are stewards of what comes across this pulpit. And if what is coming across there ain't right, they're responsible to stop it. So if you just come in and they don't know you from Adam and you've not proven yourself to be a member of this house with the right heart that is in sync with the vision of God, you have no right to take a place here and to speak to the people of God. God is going to take you on a fantastic voyage and it's not going to be what you thought it was. I'm going to do exactly what what the pastor that taught me this said this. He says, what God does is he goes, hey, are you excited? You're called to this. Yay, I'm called to be a prophet to the nations. And our first inclination is, let's go. We're going to take the world. And he's like, no, 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 no. Follow me. And then he goes, okay, come on. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Where are you going? 
follow me. It doesn't matter where I'm going. Just follow me. Follow me. And you're like, I'm going in circles. Follow me. Just follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. Follow me. And when we follow God, we'll be through the children's ministry, through the cleaning ministry, through the door greeting ministry, through the ushers ministry, through every ministry in the church so that we know what it feels like to be at the bottom. So that we know what it feels like to be back there on your hands and knees cleaning up the pee that somebody missed from hitting the toilet. You need to know what it feels like to be at the bottom so that you will treat the people with respect and with honor that do that when you finally get to the top. Your character is developed in that fancy little dance that you do following Jesus Christ. You can say, I don't feel called to work with kids. All the more reason to. Because how in the world are you going to deal with a 45-year-old throwing a conniption fit in the back of the church if you can't deal with a two-year-old who does it? If you can't clean up what's going on in the bathroom, how dare you think you can clean up what's going on in the front? Because people bring their messes to church. And it's got to be cleaned up. And you need to know how. But how do you do that? By getting up here first thing? No. No. By spending time in the trenches, doing the things that you don't feel cold to do, doing those things that... Uh, uh, all I'm doing, I'm in the back, nobody sees me, but I feel cold to be on TV. I feel cold. Fine. Keep that vision in your heart. Pursue God with all that you are and allow him to develop the character in you that qualifies you to be there. So don't ever think that character don't matter. There might be churches that do elevate that, but you watch their, their, their leaders fall, fall, fall. Why? Because they require nothing from them up front. Jesus Christ, he has so many gifts for all of us, but it's our job to yield to the process of maturation that makes it so that when we get to where he wants to use us the most, we actually can be used and we don't disqualify ourselves by poor, poor character. Amen. Hallelujah. So if you're not juiced yet, I don't know what. <laughs> Let the Holy Ghost it's get out the mephibulator for you. Jesus. Hallelujah.